Today, I'm on my way to Adrenaline Gym to meet up with Magnus Mitte. If you don't know who Magnus is, he is basically the world's most famous rock climber and he just so happens to be from Norway. He keeps inspiring the world through his crazy athleticism, his great content and his unbelievable strength. Today though, we'll see how well Magnus fares when trying the planche. We'll also go through a bunch of different planche exercises and make a planche program that you guys can use as well. All right, so I'm here at Adrenaline Gym uh, with uh, Magnus. Most of you guys know Magnus, right? And um, last time we met, we tried to teach you handstand push-ups. Yes, and that is about, I think, a year ago or something? Yeah. It's a while ago. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. This is probably when you're going to ask me if I've kept practicing or not. Yes, yes, I guess it's that time. Uh, so today we're going to try to teach you planche. But yeah. first off, let's start by seeing if you had any progress with your handstand push-up. Yeah. All right, show me your handstand. Yeah, so the kick-up, that's the hardest part for me. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit of luck. If I'm, if I'm able to do it or not. So I might have to try a few times, but if I get it right, then I can stand for a little. Yeah, nice. Man, that's a pretty decent yeah. handstand, I'd say. A little bit of luck that I was able <laughs> to get it the first time, but... Uh, yeah, good yeah. job. Thanks. Yeah, so the next step, I guess, is to do a push-up, right? Yeah. You remember the, the cues uh, from last time? Not really, no. No. <laughs> so your, one of your problem was yeah. uh, you went straight down with your head and right. you need to go to a, like a stable, more like a headstand yeah. where you have this triangle. So my problem is that I go like straight down like this yeah. instead of going down like that. Yeah. You don't so, have to overdo it, yeah. just a little bit. I think I've gotten a little bit stronger in that movement since last time. Uh, now I'm able to do like 10 uh, push-ups next if you if I'm uh, helping with a wall. Yeah. So I'm a little bit stronger in that position than last time. I've never been able to get a proper handstand push-up before though. So it would be cool if this was the first time I did it. Nice. Almost close. But, yeah, um, yeah. You How just far down your... do you have to go though to get it? Uh, head to floor is like a head to floor standard, is the proper yeah. way, yeah. So aim for your forehead towards the, the floor. Yeah, the concrete is very hard though, so uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how aggressive you just, I want to you do just it. Don't, uh, you just have to not face plant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so based on what you saw now, is there anything that I can do differently? One thing that a lot of people sort of forget mm -hmm. is that when they go all the way down, because yep. we do need to get our heads a little bit forward mm -hmm. and then our legs come in front of our body sort of like this a bit and then they fall yeah. down yeah that's very common okay so a way to sort of remedy this uh -huh. would be once you go down just focus on uh, not losing control yeah and when you push yourself up squeeze your heels okay allow yourself to banana a little bit it's a little bit cheating some yeah. people would say it's not too good but okay. i would say for the purpose <laughs> of your first handstand push-up yeah what, totally what do you fine. mean by that though squeezing the heels uh, instead of allowing your legs to yeah. fold down when you're pushing up mm -hmm. you, uh, okay. you sort of drive your heels over your head over your head okay because that will help you regain control over your center of gravity uh, but I'm, I'm ready to try it again yeah yeah cool nice yeah <laughs> i mean i did have to walk a little bit i'll oh, say yeah. uh, no that's awesome yeah thanks yeah okay so that's your first freestanding handstand I guess so, yeah, yeah. I could always improve the form, but yeah, that was probably my best handstand push-up ever, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, super cool. So with that out of, out of the way, yeah. uh, let's um, see if you can uh, learn how to do planche. What's your experience here? No experience. I've <laughs> tried it once with uh, Odin. He's a Norwegian gymnast. He tried to teach me, but for me, it's just very hard movement. Uh, it's the same with this sort of stuff because it's the opposite of the climbing. Like I'm used to like pulling yeah, yeah. hard, but the other way I'm super weak. So the planche, it just felt impossible for me last time. Yeah, so uh, what we will do today is we will see where uh, Magnus is at with mm -hmm. his uh, planche. Uh, we will introduce some um, 
basic principles for all plunge levels and progressions. So yeah. sort of how to activate the different muscles, the shoulder position you need, what yeah. makes the plunge more difficult, what mm -hmm. makes it easier. We obviously want to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. So that's also something yeah. we're going to work on, try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. And we'll introduce sort of a roadmap to getting in the plunge, yeah. both for Magnus as well as for you guys, so that you can sort of follow, follow along and uh, see what level you're at, how you can push it to the next level and approach the plunge in the long term. Cool. You ready? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so, so mm. first I just want to explain a little, a few things about the plunge because yep. it can be very intimidating for people mm. and people imagine like the full plunge to be like the end goal. Yeah. Um, but personally, I think plunge training can be very beneficial, even though full plunge is not your goal yeah. in the end. Just the strength that you get from this is super relevant to all kind of hand balancing skills, mm -hmm. like a press to handstand, where you statically start yeah. uh, and, and just press your legs up, for example. Yeah. It's the same kind of strength. So you develop very relevant strength for other handstand skills as well. Like if you do a handstand and you want to move to different positions and do like flowy skills, yeah. uh, then uh, plunge strength is super relevant. Mm -hmm. And also, I think for most people, aiming for the straddle plunge is perhaps more than enough. So yeah. I figured we'd start off by seeing if Magnus here has the perfect body for the plunge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how do we measure that? The first thing that's going to impact your plunge is your body weight. Okay. So how heavy are you, Magnus? I'm around 70 kilos. That's not uh, super light, uh, it's not super heavy. So I'd say it's like, uh, it's a good weight for the plunge. Uh, how tall are you? 173. So you're not uh, super tall, no. you're not super short. Uh, you're a good height, I'd say, for, for the for plunge. plunge. Yeah. yeah. And the next uh, is your uh, ape index. About the same, or maybe plus one centimeter, so 174 maybe. So you're so. plus... Plus one or okay. pretty much zero. Yeah, yeah that's, that's about, uh, that's good. The, the longer your arms are compared to your body, the easier it's gonna get. You also have a few other things. Uh, for example, your weight distribution. Yeah. So how big your legs are compared to your upper body. For a climber, I have heavy legs. Yeah, but for I, a normal I would... person, I think I have pretty light legs. Yeah, I would say you're like average, uh, yeah, yeah. Like average uh, yeah. there, uh, which is not bad, it's not uh, good. Yeah. So <laughs> all in all, I'd yeah. say your plunge body is average. average. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so going forward, yeah. um, we're going to use uh, parallettes mm -hmm. uh, because I already know that you have some wrist issues. Yeah. Um, and the planche is super hard on the wrists. Yeah. And where can I get these? Well, these particular ones yeah. are from my new brand, Movement Made. They're as little as possible yeah. while being what you need. <laughs> you can probably also notice that the grip is a bit fatter, yep. which will make it more comfortable and give you slightly better control. First, I figured we'd um, see if you can do a tuck plunge. Just give it a go so we uh, get a look at where we're at. Like that? or Yeah, yeah? more or less. Okay. That's pretty good already. Yeah. Awesome. I would say Magnus's tuck plunge is not bad at all. I've tried it without these and I was not able to do it. I think that's the, because I have shorter arms, uh, the distance for me is hard. Yeah. Like doing it like this, I don't. Yeah, so you need to bend your yeah. elbows when you do this. Yeah. But here you were able to keep them perfectly straight, which yeah. is fine. But I, I figured we'd start off by at least explaining to, to you and the viewers yeah. sort of what's important. The first things we, we need to consider is our shoulder positions. In a planche, like we explained earlier, mm -hmm. we need our hands to be directly beneath our center of gravity. Okay. So when we do a top planche, we make it easier because our center of gravity is moved upwards mm -hmm. towards our chest because we pull our legs in. Yeah. That means we need to lean less. And it also shortens the lever between our shoulders and our center of gravity. But we can do some other things to manipulate this, like our shoulder placement. If my shoulders are up here, mm -hmm. it's gonna be further down to our center of gravity, right? Yeah. If I push them down as much as possible, mm. we're gonna shorten this distance just by manipulating our shoulder position. That's referred to as scapular depression. So you have elevation, yeah. you have protraction, mm -hmm. you have retraction, and depression. So depression means pushing our shoulders down towards our center of gravity mm -hmm. to shorten this distance. Yeah. This will also help us activate some of our core muscles. We're using our lats, we're using our mm -hmm. uh, serratus anterior and some traps in yeah. doing this. And then we also want to push our shoulders forwards, which is referred to as protraction. And then you also 
stabilize this position by squeezing your chest. Yeah. And it's easier when you depress to, yeah. to get this activation. Now, uh, the other thing we can do to shorten this lever is to flex our spine. So basically push out our spine a bit. Okay, yeah. What this does is, because we're rounding our back, we're sort mm -hmm. of making our back shorter. Yeah. Also effectively decreasing this distance. All right. So this helps both with the tuck plunge, it helps with the full plunge mm -hmm. and the straddle plunge as well, keeping these particular form cues in place. Okay. And then we're gonna need to have our elbows straight. And that will put a lot of pressure on our biceps. So beginners might want to go uh, particularly easy on this yeah. because we get a lot of tendon pressure. And in the plunge, basically what we're doing is we're doing this. Yeah only we are doing it statically. Right. But we're actually preventing our arms from going down yeah. in order to keep the position. Right. So we're using our front delts and our biceps. Right. Because our bicep assists in this flexion mm -hmm. and it also prevents our elbows from getting hyperextended so, or from you know, breaking in yeah. half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, try to keep these form cues in mind now. Yeah. Uh, when you do the tuck plunge, uh, so the viewer might also be interested to, to know that uh, the more we tuck our knees towards our chest, the easier this is going to be. Okay. Ah, perfect. Yeah, that already felt easier than the first time. Before we go further, yeah. let's see how people can regress this in order to learn the tuck plunge in the first place. Okay, so um, first let's introduce a pure strength and technique drill that anyone can use regardless of level. And I'm referring to an exercise called planche leans. And what we do is we basically start in this piked position and then we lean forward, focusing on the shoulder cues we had earlier to straighten our hips and push up again. So you could hold this and make it like a static exercise. But for the purpose of strength training, I think it's good to use repetitions because we're used to using repetitions. Now the way we make this harder is we lean more and more. And when we do strength training, we want some sort of way to measure, yeah, right? Yeah. And the way to do this here is to measure the distance to an object. In most cases, using a wall would be good. Right but I can pretend to be the wall now. Yeah. If I'm the wall, you're basically, what you want to do is you want to measure how many hands away from the wall you are. So I do one, two, three. Okay, and that's where I put my parallettes. And then I start here with straight arms and my hips straight. And that's sort of my point of measurement. Right. I shouldn't put weight on the head but I should barely touch mm -hmm. up again. And then once I get stronger, perhaps I can do like five, 10 repetitions of this. Maybe I wanna go four hands. So let's see how far you can go. So one, two, three, let's four. Let's try four. Yeah, let's start there four. and see. So you start with your head here so that you can sort of get into a straight hip position. But this uh, felt uh, rather okay. Yeah, not, not easy, but yeah. yeah. Let's let's try a little further then. Yeah, five. Yeah. So here. Okay, so start. Oh, that is hard. Yeah. And keep your uh, elbow straight. This looks like uh, a good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could now, probably now. do like two or three repetitions of that. Yeah. So uh, now you already did some, we didn't rest any between the, the sets. Yeah. So I would imagine you could do like four or five of these yeah, uh, rested. Which means I think it's a good level, level yeah. for you to, to train. Five of your own hand. Yeah. <laughs> we all have different hands. With. Yeah. Yeah. You noticed uh, how much uh, it changed just by changing oh, yeah, one, yeah. Hand's one hand. One hand is. And you, if you go one hand back, then it will be considerably easier. So you can adjust this to whatever level uh, possible, even complete beginners, yeah. where it might just be like this much. Yeah. So it's a great exercise to use also for just pure shoulder strength and to get some extra yeah. bicep power. Nice. <laughs> but now let's uh, focus on more direct 
exercises towards the plunge. So in this case, the best possible way to simulate a plunge mm -hmm. is by doing a plunge, yeah. only easier, which is why we're gonna use rubber bands, because we can simulate the exact same movement that we want to do, yeah. only by subtracting some weight from ourselves. And I just so happen to have a gift for you today, Magnus, so oh, yeah. that you can take your plunge training everywhere with these completely natural rubber bands yeah. from uh, Movement Made, that is my brand, you know it. Yeah. A little bit of... Uh, uh, plug? Uh, what? A plug. A plug? Like uh, self-advertisement. Oh, that's called a plug. Yeah, a plug. Okay. Plugging it. A little bit of plug yeah, uh, should bit. be allowed, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, these look beautiful. Um, very cool. Thank you very much. I'm definitely yeah, going to use these. And uh, now we're also going to use them to learn the planche. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, when you're approaching the straddle planche, which I guess will be our goal, yeah. um, there are many different steps in mm -hmm. the way. So firstly, the goal should be to do the, the tuck planche. And then the next step should be an advanced tuck planche. And then you mm -hmm. can do a one leg open half leg. And then you have uh, something called an open half leg. Then you have the, the straddle planche, which is sort of where we'll put the end level of this particular video. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys also how you can use a band the most mm. uh, effective way. So for most people, just wrapping it around your hip is good. So here, for example, we could do a tuck planche. And when I do it this way, you see that the rubber band is helping me directly upwards. Yeah. One, it won't throw us out of balance. And two, it will help us uh, in the direction of gravity. So it means it won't alter the position. If I do this and go over here, I might be able to hold it, but because of the drag, the angle uh, of my arms yeah. will be different from a uh, full planche without it. Yeah, yeah. Now, the first thing I think you should try is mm. advanced tuck planche. So instead, instead of tucking all the way in here, yeah. you're tucking okay. 90 degrees. Oh, that is straight, hard. straight elbows, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is hard for me. Yeah, it is hard. Uh, to make an advanced tuck planche slightly easier. You could also do the same, only with um, one leg. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and then as you build up capacity there, yeah. you build up more time, you will be able to do that same thing with two legs. And then eventually you can skip the band. I actually recommend not going below 10 seconds. If you uh, imagine regular strength training, uh, you would usually not go below three reps, yeah. right? Yeah. You can do singles, yeah, yeah. but you usually don't use that. So I like to think about static training as three seconds being one repetition. So, so I should have made this a little bit easier because I don't think I can hold this for Well, you can combine ten. bands. Yeah. So let's do the thinnest one in addition. And then now I'll go for max hold. That was Ooh. more or less 10 seconds. Yeah. So to me, that looks like a, it's a good level. Yeah. Yeah. And that means um, because this skinny band here, Mm -hmm. It doesn't help you very much, yeah. but it's noticeable. Yeah. It's like when you're doing a bench press, if you work towards your max range yeah. and then suddenly you add like two and a half kilos, it will be difference. considerable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably in a couple of weeks, you can remove this yeah. and then you'll probably be able to hold the same position yeah. uh, for about 10 seconds without it. So we already discussed the advanced tuck mm -hmm. and after this, would be a, a one leg variation as well, okay. um, where you are leaning and you're tucking one knee completely and straightening the other completely. Okay. <clears throat> and this would be one leg half lay planche. Then after this would be an open half lay where you're straddling, mm -hmm. straightening your hips, but bending a knee. Why not throw on the thickest band as well okay. and see if we can make perhaps a half lay straddle planche work yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So one knee tucked, other one straight. <sighs> no. Yeah, you can already feel it's a different uh, beast, yeah? Yeah. So, um, suggestion uh. to make it slightly easier to get used to the position. So instead of lifting first, straightening after, you start by with your toe in the ground mm -hmm. and your knee tucked. Then you straighten Yeah. and then you lean into it. Okay. So the toe... Yeah. Yeah, oh. <laughs> better. 
Yeah. Let, let's try to throw in these two to see if yeah, it feels better. Yeah, let's do that. Better. Let's try the half lay open with both legs. Yeah. So we enter it in the same way where we have one toe in the ground, straighten this one, mm -hmm. lean into it, and then we straighten the other one. Oh, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's not too yeah. far away though. Yeah, it's but, not too uh, far, yeah. Looks like we found your limit both without bands and, yeah. and with bands. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put all of this together into sort of like a workout. And how about resting in between? Usually you use like two minutes, three mm -hmm. minutes. The most important thing is that you're able to do it without losing form or time. With your sort of body and your strength mm -hmm. and your starting point, learning a straddle plunge should be achievable for you within six to 12 months. But when I reach, or if I reach the straddle pl plunge, I probably want to do the full plunge. Yeah, but then, yeah. then you, that's, that's yeah. a decision you can make. Yeah, it at makes sense, right? but how long do you think that'll take? Another year, yeah. uh, or it could take several. All right, so uh, I guess you learned at least a little bit of how you can approach the plunge, yep. even though you didn't achieve it today, which I guess wasn't expected either. Wasn't not expected at all, no. <laughs> and I hope you guys also learned how you could approach both a tuck plunge as well as the other progressions to eventually reach a straddle plunge or a full plunge. You can use this workout that we introduced and all of the different exercises to do your plunge training by yourself, wherever you're training. I guess, good luck. Good luck. After our plunge session, we had to check out what Adrenaline Gym had to offer. So we tested out some obstacles, had some fun, and felt like real ninja warriors. We'll be back with more crazy obstacles on Magnus's channel. And if you didn't check out the video where I tried to teach Magnus how to handstand push up, you can check it out right here. You can also check out how we go about making our minimalistic and sustainable gym equipment right here.